And now I'm going to read you some stories from my book, Mermaids Are Cool. And my book, Mermaids Are Cool, is also on my website. So I'll just read you the list of the names of all the mermaids, of course, because I like um, the alphabet. So there's one mermaid with each alphabet letter. So the first mermaid is Akashni, and then there's Bimini, and Coralania, Desirania, Exquisata, Fish Lover, Gardenesta, Happy Luster, Iridesca, Joyronista, Crestawava, Lemuria, Magnifica, Nobilesta, Oceanimpta, Paradiselli, Quanumpta, Rowanaria, Starista, Taranta, Uli Weaver, Vangloria, Wavanesta, Zeranoska, Yamanumta, and Zawesta. So, the first story in my book, Mermaids Are Cool, is called Walter Walrus Winces with the World's Worst Toothache. One day, down in the washy warm waves on the seashore, a walrus lay groaning and moaning. Groan, groan, moan, moan, the other sea creatures could hear. I wonder who that is and what the problem is, Samantha Seal said to Lucy Lobster. Let's swim over and see. So Samantha Seal and Lucy Lobster swam quickly over to where the sound was coming from. It's a walrus, said Samantha Seal. Take care, said Lucy Lobster. Walruses can be very cantankerous, and if you were to get in the way of their big tusks, they could dab in you something terrible. Don't worry, said Samantha Seal. I'll be careful, but he's in pain, and we have to try and help him. Lucy Lobster settled down behind the coral reef. She would be ready to lend a hand, but she was not going to put herself in possible harm's way. Those walrus tusks are huge, she thought. That walrus could crush me under one of those tusks and not even realise I was there. Samantha Seal slid slowly up close to the walrus. Hello, walrus. Are you in pain? Do you need help? Walter Walrus was in no mood for conversation. He was tempted to slash Samantha Seal with one of his tusks but as she looked at him so caringly, he held back his temper. Oh, toothache, he said, so bad. I can imagine, said Samantha Seal, you have such big teeth. That must be the world's worst toothache. All Walter Walrus could do was nod before he let out another deep, distressing groan and moan of pain. I've never known a walrus with toothache before, said Samantha Seal, but I will try to help you and do what I can. Samantha Seal spoke with confidence, but actually she had never had to help any creature who had toothache before, and she really did not know what to do. I better take a closer look, she thought, so then maybe I will get an idea about how to help Walter Walrus and his terrible toothache. So carefully, ever so carefully, Samantha Seal swam closer and closer to Walter Walrus until she could see quite clearly that Walter had a deep scratch on one of his tusks. Have you had any accidents with your tusks recently? asked Samantha. But poor Walter Walrus was in too much pain to tell Samantha Seal that he had caught his tusk rather badly in between the coral on the reef when he was chasing some sumptuous morsels to feast on. He had a tough time getting his tusk loose, and it was after that reef encounter that his tusk had started to ache and ache, and he was almost beside himself with the pain. Samantha Seal racked her brains to know what to do. Maybe the salty water is getting into the tear in his tusk and that is what is causing the pain, she thought. So she slapped her flippers together and scooped up some sand and started to apply it to Walter Walrus's torn tusk. She had to be very, very careful as she didn't want to cause Walter any more pain than he was already suffering. This sand might do the trick for a short time, thought Samantha Seal, but I will need to think of something else to help Walter Walrus while his tusk heals properly. Then she thought about a friend of hers who she knew she could always call on to help whatever sea, sea creatures were in trouble. Once Samantha Seal had finished packing Walter Walrus's torn tusk, she dived down to Lucy Lobster who was still hidden behind the reef. Lucy Lobster, I need you to scout around and find me a big cowrie shell. Can you do that please? Are cowrie shells a cure for toothache? asked Lucy Lobster. No, but I need one urgently, said Samantha Seal. So Lucy Lobster scurried around down along the reef until she found a big cowrie shell. She swam up to Samantha Seal and passed over the shell. 
And then she was astonished to see Samantha Seal put the shell up to her lips and blow a loud sound. The sound carried out across the reef, way, way out to the deeper ocean. Lucy Lobster looked out across the reef, but she couldn't see anything. What does blowing a shell have to do with curing a walrus's toothache, she asked Samantha Seal. Wait and see, said Samantha Seal. Suddenly, Lucy Lobster could see a glinting, glinting flash coming across the reef. Then she saw what looked like a creature she'd never seen before. This creature looked a bit like a seal, but it had long streamers flowing out behind its head. What kind of sea creature is that? Lucy Lobster asked Samantha Seal. That is my friend, a Cashney mermaid, said Samantha Seal. Can she cure the lobsters? Can she cure the walrus's toothache? Asked Lucy Lobster. I hope so, said Samantha Seal. She's always full of great ideas about how to help all the sea creatures. I hope she can cure a walrus's toothache. The walrus was still in pain, but since Samantha Seal had packed his torn tusk with sand, he had quietened down quite a lot. At least I was able to help him somewhat, said Samantha Seal, but he needs something that will hold the sand in place for the time it takes for his tusk to heal up completely. So that's why I've called on a Kashni mermaid. I hope she will have the answer to stop Walter Walrus's pain permanently. Just then, a Kashni mermaid arrived in a pool of pearlescent purple and a swirl of swishy, glittering scales, for she had a long, curvy tail. Lucy Lobster had never seen a mermaid before. She had never even heard about mermaids before. I thought I knew all the sea creatures, she thought, but I guess not. Samantha Seal quickly explained all about Walter Walrus's terrible toothache to the mermaid, who was very sympathetic. You have done well, Samantha Seal, to think of packing Walter Walrus's torn tusk with sand to keep out the salty water. But now we need to find a way to keep the sand packed in tight until Walter Walrus's poor torn tusk can heal properly. And with a whisk of her long silvery tail, the mermaid dove down to the deepest part of the reef. She was gone for a long time, and Samantha Seal and Lucy Lobster were worried that she was not coming back when she suddenly reappeared. A Kashni mermaid surfaced with a long, green, snake-like ribbon of strong, deep-water seaweed. It took me some time to find the right length of seaweed, she said. Then she swam up close to Walter Walrus. Walter, she said, I'm going to bind your poor torn tusk with this seaweed. That will keep in the sand that Samantha Seal has packed into the tear in your tusk. And while your tusk is bound up with seaweed, it will be able to heal. But you will not be able to go swimming in the deep ocean until it's healed properly. Do you understand? Walter Walrus nodded his head. He was still in too much pain to speak. But he lay quietly while the Kashni mermaid bound his poor torn tusk with the strong seaweed. Finally she was finished and Walter lay still. Now, said the Kashni mermaid... Samantha Seal, I need you to help me guide Walter Walrus to a shallow sea pool just behind the reef where he'll be able to rest quietly while his tusk heals. It is important that he does not get swept out into deeper water until he's ready to swim out there himself. So Samantha Seal and Akashni Murma gently swam with Walter Walrus to the sea pool just behind the reef where he would rest until his poor torn tusk was healed. And Lucy Lobster, said Akashni Murma, I want you to keep a lookout from the reef to warn Walter Walrus if there are any big waves coming in so that he won't get washed out. Lucy Lobster was very happy to be involved in Walter Walrus's healing as she knew then that he would be careful not to crush her with one of his tusks because he would know that she was there. So that's the story of Walter Walrus and the world's worst toothache. You know, Hawaii is a microcosm of the world with people here from all over the world. And Noa Noa Hawaii is a microcosm of the traditional arts of the world with beautiful patterns from many countries. They've been in business for 38 years with wonderful Hawaii design boutique clothing. Their hand-dyed and handmade clothes have patterns that are based on traditional kapa and tapa designs from Hawaii, Polynesia, Micronesia, Indonesia, even New Zealand and Africa. So check out all of the wonderful um, items that Noa Noa has on their website, which is www.noanoahawaii.com. So I'll be back next week, so bye for now.